there's been a lot of discussion about the prosperity gospel, and we rightfully condemn it. Much has been spoken and written about its deception and dangers as it distorts scripture, and it replaces the good news of Christ with positive thinking in pursuit of health and wealth. But I'd like to take a few moments to to think through and to identify a distortion of the gospel that is much more pervasive and much more insidious in our churches. It's what I'd like to call the practicality gospel. The practicality gospel relegates scripture and the gospel, and it makes results the primary focus. It is much more insidious, and it's difficult to detect. David Foster Wallace, in a commencement speech, shared an opening parable that I think is helpful as we consider ways that we may have gone blind to this distortion of the gospel. He said, There are these two young fish swimming along, and they happen to meet an older fish swimming the other way, who nods at them and says, Morning, boys, how's the water? And the two young fish swim on for a bit, and then eventually one of them looks at the other and goes, Water? What is that? Now, the point is that they were so surrounded and immersed in their own environment that they had become blinded to it. And what I would like us to think through is, how have we become so immersed in our own environment of practicality, in our own environment of getting results, that we've become blind to the ways in which that has relegated the gospel and pushed it into the background as we bring other things to the front. Now, Scripture is still sprinkled in. You'll still see biblical passages quoted. You'll still see verses quoted. They'll be quoted in our sermons. They'll be quoted in our small groups. They'll be quoted in our programs. They'll be quoted in our curriculum. But they're pulled apart from their context, and they're disconnected from the overarching theme of Scripture, which is salvation through Christ and His atoning work. So yes, scripture's still sprinkled in, but really what we're about is actually seeing results. Scripture's still sprinkled in, but really what we're about is helping people in the here and the now with their finances, with their relationships, and with their careers. Because practical results has come to the front as the gospel and supernatural results has been shifted to the back. The gospel also may be alluded to. The word gospel may be used quite a bit. And even the gospel itself may be truncated and tacked on like a 30-second sales pitch at the end of a speech. Or it may be woven in at the very last of the meetings that are in a series of uh, meetings that we have for a specific class or community group or something along those lines. But the point is that it's been pushed into the periphery instead of being front and center where it's intended to be. Meanwhile, people are broken, but we offer them to-do lists and distractions instead of peace, comfort, hope, and absolution that comes only with the proclamation of the gospel. We exchange fruitfulness for success and make no mistake Fruitfulness and success are not synonyms. They're not identical. Fruitfulness is when we see the supernatural results of doing things God's way. Success is when we see things happen in our own power and by our own effort. And we've traded the two. We've settled for being able to market well enough, being able to add on our own sales pitches to proven methodologies to get more people to come on board with our programming. We've settled for that instead of actually seeing people's souls comforted, people's sins forgiven, people's lives supernaturally transformed through the proclamation and administering of the gospel and of grace the way that God intended us to and commanded us to. We exchange caring for souls for getting sheep to jump through hoops like an evangelical dog show. So we settle for behavior modification instead of actual supernatural transformation. If we can get people to follow our three-step program 
or our alliterated uh, three-step way to improve whatever, insert whatever area of your life here in our sermon title. If we focus on those things and the practicality of it all, we actually push the gospel into the background. And in so doing, we actually see success, but not fruit. And that is part of the insidious nature of the practicality gospel. We are so surrounded by it. We are so engulfed by it that we can no longer detect the ways in which we've actually taken Christ and pushed him into the background and taking our own, taken our own efforts and results and placed them into the foreground. The practicality gospel is insidious. And it finds its way into our churches and into our ministry and into our own personal lives in ways that we can seldom detect. If you'd like to learn more about the Practicality Gospel, you can read about it a lot further and see much more information on my latest blog by the same title at calvinistpicard.com.